Matt Smith. How are we doing, man? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Yeah, man, I'm good. How's how's life been after the little blip that you had in your last fight? Um, how how has it sunk in? How can you go forward from that? Um, yeah, it sunk in. Yeah, it was just uh, it's one of them things, isn't it? It's um it's the fight game. It's fifty fifty. Um, that stuff's going to happen. And it was a it was a risk. Like the the weight was a different weight, so yeah. it was a, it was a lot bigger. Um, and my biggest asset is my power. So when that's taken away from me, when someone's a lot bigger, they can take my power. But um, it was a good fight, and yeah, I'm just life's gone back to normal. Really, I'm just enjoying enjoying being back to a bit of normality, and looking forward to getting a new fight date, hopefully for the summertime, so I can get back on it. Has there been any word on that? Um, hopefully in the summertime. Yeah, Eddie Hearn sent me a message after the fight saying like great performance and stuff, and we'll go again at 140 pounds, mm -hmm. which is what I originally like to fight at, uh, like well to wait. So yeah, we're just gonna just getting the date penciled in. Um, so yeah, hopefully summertime we'll be back out there. All right, brilliant. Um, just really, if we can just touch up upon some of your amateur career and how you got into boxing. Uh, how how did you get into boxing? Well, I it was me. It was me and a few of my mates. We just go down to the boxing gym, and um, and yeah, we we always used to like play fight. And I always used to like fly, fight fighting nonstop. So I thought I want to kind of I always want to give one of them kids. I don't know if you remember when you were a kid, you you throw punches like hammer fists. You like do that hammer fist, and I thought that's how I used to throw punches. So I thought I want to get down to the gym, learn how to throw punches properly. And um, a lot of my mates kind of dropped off from it, and I ended up sticking at it. And I had about. 50 odd fights in the amateurs um i didn't really focus on the amateurs as much as i probably should have done i just liked having a fight i liked get, like getting fit for a bit um have a i do like seasons in the amateur season i do like a a season of um probably about six six months of just hard work and training i get about 10 fights in sometimes quite a few in and then um then i'll have like six months off and i kept doing it like that so I never really hundred percent focused, and yeah, I chalked up about fifty fights. I didn't get a bad, bad record. I think it's about fifty. I won about thirty-seven or something like that. That's something like that. Record, man. Quite a few knockouts, which was nice. So I always knew I could bang because if you knock people out with their head guard and them amateur gloves, and I knew I could bang. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah. When did you know that? Do you know when you were actually training, and when did you really pick it up and? really push for it and think yeah i want to do this as a living well i feel like i, I used to do a lot of traveling so i'd always go off traveling in my, my early 20s and i would um i'd still be boxing amateur and i'd always come back and it would get harder and harder i'd come back and i'd be fighting geezers that uh that were good and stuff and i'm thinking like they're obviously knuckling down and doing it properly and i, I wasn't and i loved to fight and i thought I do want to do it, but it's harder now I'm older. So I want to get paid for getting punched in the head. So I'm going to, uh, I thought I'd better knuckle down because you can't do boxing half-heartedly. You have to give it everything and probably go for it. So I think I was 25 when I turned pro. And that's when, yeah, I knocked all the traveling on the head and I decided to actually, yeah, do something with it. And yeah, 25 I was when I started that. Wow. Did you fight any good pedigree amateurs back in your day when you were fighting amateur? Um, I thought, um, yeah, I thought, I thought that Jordan Reynolds, he boxed for wow. Team GB. Yeah. Um, I fought him. I fought him when I'd just come back from Australia and I'd been on just an absolute piss up in Australia uh, for about six to eight months. And I got back, I got a bit fit and they said, oh, you got this guy to box. And he was young. I think he was like 18. I was about 20. I was about 24 and I thought oh, I'd have this little 18 year old yeah. but he was pretty good and uh, <laughs> yeah he, he beat me but um, yeah I can't think of any other people's names kind of thing who were that good no, no one is that brilliant to be honest mm -hmm. what, what, did, what was your amateur boxing club how, how extensive was the history of that club um, it was Norwich Lads Club so oh. it's, it's a pretty good club it's, it's been around for a good hundred years now I think I think it had its hundred year anniversary maybe a few years ago now. So, yeah, it's still going. I think it's still going strong. Um, uh, but, yeah, I trained. My trainer was Steve Sickton S, but he done. He was a London guy that 
that uh, moved to to Norfolk and yeah, he he trained me the whole time. Frank Sixness um, was his son who we trained, and he also trains me as a professional now. So we've kind of I've kind of stuck with my amateur coaches kind of thing through to the pro game. Yeah, it's always good to be around people who know you. You know what I mean? Who's not going to just tell you what you want to hear? They're going to tell you the yeah. right stuff and correct stuff. How um, how important do you feel that is in a pro boxer's career? Yeah, very important. You need to have people. You need to have people around you that have got my best interests at heart. At yeah. the end of the day, um, so you're having people that you fully trust. My manager Dan Naylor, um, he's been with me since the get go. Uh, good friends as well as my manager. Same as Frank, my trainer. So. Yeah, it's been it's it's good having people that you trust and that are close to you in this game for sure. You you really burst onto the scene by beating one of our local lads, Drew Laws. Um, mm-hmm. Can you talk a little bit through that? How how did you find preparation for that, knowing that you were going to be boxing on the big stage? Well, yeah, that was I mean the big breakthrough. Um, it was something we'd always been waiting for, and since COVID kind of hit, they wanted more 50-50 fights, so. Um, we yeah we got what do we get two weeks notice for that fight with Laws and I I had known Laws before I'd seen him online and stuff like that and and I thought he can obviously bang by his record and he's I like Joe I think he's a funny geezer as well he's a good guy and um, yeah he's good for boxing as well and I thought he I thought he must be able to bang so I thought yeah it's gonna be a hard fight but I thought I've just got to give it everything I've just got to get in there and I've just got to win to really cement my name out there and get people to know who I am kind of thing. Um, so with the two weeks preparation really had, I managed to get a good sparring with Connor Ben. Um, I used to spar Connor Ben on the regular when I'm in camp. Yeah. And yeah, he luckily got us in, got us good rounds for him. And then, yeah, it was kind of, I didn't really have time for me to process it. So it was two weeks notice, mm-hmm. bang, we're in the bubble. Next minute I'm walking out live on Sky Sports and I just, I didn't really take a lot of it in that much, but, yeah, got the job done, which was nice. Yeah. Did you, did you think that helped with you just having to be thrown straight in there, little time to prepare? Were you, were you doing bit training before that when you got the call or were you, were you full steam ahead or were you just doing what you so, could? Yeah, I was, I was ticking over. I was ticking over doing training probably about four, four nights a week kind of thing, just ticking over, keeping my fitness kind of there. Um, I hadn't obviously been doing any sparring, so I had no fight date. And then, bang, you had the fight date in two weeks. And we had to be ramped up training up for the two weeks. Um, and, yeah, I think it maybe helped because there was no time for me to really think what's actually happening. Like, yeah. am I, I'm going on to the big stage. Yeah, it probably helped that it was quite quick. Um, it sort of introduced me into the big stage quite nicely because then I was I, I understood it all after the, the Laws fight. And then you had the Marku fight, so I was ready because I'd done it before. So, yeah, it was quite helpful, that fight, to be honest. Do you think also, because Joe, obviously, it's no secret, he's got a huge following. Um, do you think the no crowds out also? Because the, some of the atmosphere that some of Joe's fans do create is quite, like, it, it could be quite daunting for opponents, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think that... Um, definitely it helped me but didn't help laws like he he obviously likes having the crowd there and he probably feeds from the crowd and and goes for it more um but yeah i mean i i'm i'm come someone that doesn't really care about that side of things like when i used to box as an amateur i was always boxing in london right. and um there wasn't a lot of boxing going on in norwich kind of thing so i would never have crowds with me as an amateur i'd have a couple of people that would come but i'd always have people screaming for for my opponent and I used to quite like that I used to feel like this is this spurring me on when they're screaming I've got no one behind me I thought at the end of the day they can scream all they want but it's me and you in this ring then they can't help you so it doesn't bother me that but I can definitely see that it does affect some fighters having no crowd well we'll talk about the fight with Joe itself how did you find like when you got in there and when you was Obviously, it didn't take long for us to really get into it. Did you did you feel you could take his power? Did you feel like you could cut the ring, cut him off corner? Sorry, off? is this the Laws fight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I felt I did feel his power. I felt well. well the, I didn't find I felt his power like it was hard because um, 
I can't remember him really catching me with too many solid shots. Mm. Um, but I did feel like it was easy for me to navigate the ring and push him to where I want him. Um, but I didn't, I didn't expect it to be as easy as it was kind of thing. Yeah. Like I felt like I was just tunnel vision on beating him. Any means possible was just tunnel vision on beating him. And I didn't, yeah, I didn't really have time to really soak it all in that much really, but I didn't, his power didn't really affect me. Um, so yeah, I, as soon as I realised his power wasn't too much, I, yeah, I just went for him. Were you aware if you did beat Joel that you were going to get a deal from Matchroom? I, I hoped so. That's what I was hoping for. And I did I did call out Eddie Hearn in the interview afterwards. Yeah. I think I was a bit buzzing. I was just like, where's this contract? <laughs> but yeah, he, he was stuck to his word as well, which was good of him. Uh, he did sign me, um, but then signed me to then fight Marco, which is even bigger. <laughs> but yeah, yeah I've done it. You have, to, you have to do it, don't you? You've got to take risks in life sometimes. Oh, without a doubt. You've got to have these fights to help you for future fights. You know what I mean? This It's yeah. all a learning experience. Today and now our fighters really do think a loss on their record is the end of the world when really it's not, you know what I mean? No, it's not, no, it's the, end not. Of the world. Um, going into the market about how how was training? Did you was everything going smooth? Was was everything right? Did the weight did you manage to put the weight on correctly? Um, no, I, I don't like to make excuses because I was fit, I trained for eight weeks. No, it's not an excuse. The better man beat me on the night, but during my training, I tried to get myself up to like 11 stone five to try and build it up to then cut back down. Yeah. But I'm, I've never even been over 10 stone seven, really, when I'm when I'm walking around. So my weight, like I got up to I got up to about 11 stone two, three in sparring. I was blowing out my ass because I was carrying a whole stone around with me yeah. and it was all this weight that I, I couldn't spar with. So sparring wasn't great. Didn't really enjoy my sparring throughout camp. Um, and then having to cut the weight off and I just felt sluggish and lethargic and yeah, I didn't, didn't feel the best. Um, that, but it is just the re that's the reason why there's weight classes in this game because yeah. I'm a natural light welterweight. I mean, I've never, I've never weighed in at 10 stone seven or 10 stone six or anything. I, I mean, the laws fight I weighed in 10 stone 4.4, I think. And then this fight was 10 stone 4.6. And that's when I'm stuffing my face. I'm not even kind of trying to cut weight. Mm -hmm. So, and then I obviously, I, I lose weight anyway, uh, as you're going to with like a bit of nervous energy. So the day of the fight, I weighed in 10 stone three. And it's just like, I keep, keep cutting it down. And mm -hmm. I mean, I could probably... If I gave it, I could probably make lightweight if I if I gave it a go, which maybe that might be too much because it might take away my power. But 100, percent I'm a light welterweight fighter. Yeah. Uh, how did you find Mark when you got in there? Because I, I thought you started well. Obviously, you, it, Mark was coming across as a late bloomer in boxing. Obviously, having done all the MMA mm. and stuff like that, was he awkward? Um. I suppose a little bit, yeah, because he didn't do what he was supposed to do. He boxed very well, and he, he boxed on the back foot, and I thought he might come forward a little bit, and we might be able to both kind of go at it, but it was, he was all on the back foot, and he was all counter-punching. Mm -hmm. So he done, he had a good game plan for it. Um, I don't feel like we had enough game plan to change it up a little bit. Like I was still just in the mindset of walking him down and hoping he would have tired by at least five or six round yeah. kind of thing but his recovery times were pretty good i mean he re he he recovered um after i knocked him down very quickly he recovered after every round it was like it was his first round so he was super fit um and yeah i suppose i found him a bit awkward uh i found his weight me punching him he it was like he didn't really feel it, it was like in a brick wall wow. and that was kind of I suppose frustrating but yeah I just kept I continued to do the same thing which probably played into his hands a lot as well mm -hmm. what, what what can you take from that fight and apply in in the future about because obviously you said you're looking towards the summer for to get next out what things will you be working on will you will you just be drilling your good stuff and or are you working on every aspect of your game yeah, every aspect, really. I'm going to be working on a lot of my head movement a lot more because I am a come-forward fighter. Yeah. And um, 
that last fight, fuck now, I was like half it was like fighting for a letterbox. I couldn't see out of this eye. This eye was swollen. And yeah, it was not fun getting that beaten up kind of thing. So head movement for sure. Um, more game plans. Um, maybe not always coming forward, fighting the back foot a bit more. It's going to be just a whole, changing a whole lot of different things and giving it all a go. So I'm really excited to, to get the new fight date and um, get a new opponent so I can focus on that. Who would you like to fight? Um, to be honest, I'm not a big... I don't really know many names in the game. I, mm. I love the boxing, but I don't watch Concentrate it too much. And Yeah, I just con concentrate on myself. But anyone like welterweight, um, I'll have a go kind of thing. Just anyone at my own weight from now on. Mm -hmm. okay. Just going back to the... Uh, when you uh, to the Joe Laws fight when you said you only had the two weeks to prepare. H how was sparring? How, how, when did you stop sparring for that fight? Well, we only got one spar in for that fight, which wow. was, yeah, that was the week before. So it was the Friday wow. before we got the six rounds with Conor Ben, yeah. and that was it. Um, wow. So, yeah, I hadn't had any sparring, really, but I've been the whole through lockdown. Uh, as the first lockdown that was in, I think, wasn't it? Um, I was, well... Yeah, I think so. I can't remember when it was, but a few of the lockdowns was in October, wasn't it? But yeah, okay. I just, I mean, I was gagging for a fight. So, I mean, I don't think sparring would have come into it. I just wanted to get in there and whack someone kind of thing. So <laughs> that paid off, really. Oh, uh, in your career, have you all, have you had many backing? Uh, do you have sponsors? Uh, how important have they been? Yeah, I've got some sponsors. Yeah, can I give them a shout out? Is that yeah, of course right? you can. A million percent. Um, so I've got T T Griffiths Holding. Um, I've got Harmony Consulting Group. I've got Fire Snuff. I've got Assembled Scaffolding. We Solve All and Minton Care Home. They are my sponsors, and yeah, they they massively helped me throughout, especially especially throughout the lockdown and trying to train. Uh, I have I have been working, but I've had to take time off kind of thing for, for the fight. So, yeah, they've helped massively. So, yeah, proper backing me. Yeah, that's what I was just about to ask you, how, how influential and how helpful have they been during this time? Because at the start, when all this happened, I had fighters messaging me saying they had sponsors pull out, sponsors mm -hmm. were actually, their companies were folding. It really has been a tough time. And it, do you consider yourself fortunate to have those sponsors? Oh, yeah, massively. Like, they... They, that's what keeps me going in a way because I mean I couldn't I had two I had two months off for the last fight I don't get paid holiday pay to have for two months off kind of thing so yeah they keeping me in the game and it is yeah it's the it's the biggest biggest help I could ask for kind of thing. Did you watch the boxing last night? And no, I didn't know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I knew it's all going on. I heard it was good. I heard the Cheeseman fight was was awesome. I've seen a few highlights and clips, but yeah, I didn't watch it all. Yeah, the Cheeseman car fight was absolutely was it great. It was a great fight, mate. It was a great uh, fight. Does Eddie give you free sky? No, he doesn't. That's another thing. I'll get on to him. I'll call him out for that. Call him out on my podcast and tell him you want free sky for all the yeah. fighters. <laughs> yeah, I do. I think you should do that, Eddie. Eh? Give should us all free sky. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, have you set yourself a plan in boxing? Like, uh, uh, where do you ideally want to be in two, three year time? I want to have as many belts as possible, and I want to I want to be at the top of my game. Um, as long as I want to definitely start collecting some belts, um, hopefully, hopefully by the end of this year, to have some sort of belt would be brilliant. Would you like to go the traditional route? Of the uh, what do you mean by the traditional? English route? title, British title, Commonwealth. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I really don't mind whatever whatever belts on offer. If um, yeah, English title, British. There's there's so many belts these days. I can't catch up. I can't keep up with it all. <laughs> yeah, there but, is a lot of continentals, a lot of internationals, diamonds. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I don't even know what any of that means, but as long as I've got a belt, I don't, I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, would you like to give it how, how your trainers, when you were yeah. just uh, mentioning back how you've kept with them, how, how influential have they been is not just trainers themselves, but 
in your life because we all know that boxing doesn't just teach you great great fighting skills it, it teaches mm -hmm. you to be fit but also the coaches the molding and brilliant people how, yeah. how influential yeah quite, quite a lot actually especially because they're quite close to to both of them i mean uh steve sickness he he trained me as an amateur i had 50 odd fights with him then his son has trained me as a professional about eight fights with him and it's just yeah it's not just they're not just my trainers at the end of the day, they're they're my mates and it's yeah they're i'm close to them so yeah yeah, they've been really influential towards everything kind of thing, which is which is good. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just a, another quick couple of questions before we go, Ryland. Um, well, I know you said that you don't really keep an eye out on other boxers or in and around, but have do you keep up to date with any of just the rankings of where you are and who you have to beat to progress to get up that ladder? No, I don't, to be honest. I, I really don't. Um, if people started listing off some names, I'd be like, oh, yeah, I heard of him or yeah. I would have heard of him kind of thing. But off the top of my head, I couldn't really say, no. Mm -hmm. I'm not that, yeah, I don't keep up with it too much, to be honest. I like, I do watch boxing. If it's on TV, I watch it. I don't have Sky or anything like that or BT Sport, but I always watch the highlights. I watch, I'm all over social media, but that's about as far as it goes with me. <laughs> Who was your heroes growing up? Um, I used to love Joe Fraser. I loved him. Um, obviously Mike Tyson, he was another one. Um just just any fighter that could bang. That David Tour. Was it David Tour? Oh, yeah, David Tour. He was yeah. he was great. I enjoyed watching him. Um, anyone that was big and that could bang, I used to love watching. Honest Ryland, honestly, it's been fantastic talking to you. Um would you come on sometime over uh, again, sometime in the future? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, whenever. Definitely nice one, brother. Um, Cheers, mate. That's, that's it, basically, people. Uh, thank you for joining in. And Rylan, much appreciated for joining us, pal. You're welcome. Nice to speak to you.